stats, they're going to do this bigger and better every single year. But what's scary about it, it isn't, it isn't just the cops showing off their canines that they spent $200,000 a piece to train, but you got the military out there spending massive amounts of money just to impress the American people with military might. Why? Because they're going to roll that out against us. I mean, we can continue to see the military used domestically here against us. They're going to bring it back because it's all about money. Just like one last thing, you said when you went to the airport, they just turned off the TSA yes. sc scanners. Because there was such a massive influx of people, you know, of course, people going home from the Super Bowl. So uh, we went to the TSA check and I was going to opt out like I always do. They said, oh, you don't have to opt out because the scanner's off. You can walk straight through. You can leave your shoes on too. Just amazing. Yeah. Totally phony. We'll be right back after the break with an interview with Matthew Mills. He's the guy who got in without a ticket and went right up to the MVP desk, took the mic away from the MVP of the NFL and put out a video bomb about 9-11. Stay tuned. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. We're on the march, the Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. To investigate 9-11, 9-11 was perpetrated by people within our own government. Okay. All right. Is everybody all right? Well, as I mentioned earlier, there was a bomb at the Super Bowl, a video bomb. We had an independent journalist, Matthew Mills, drop a major information bomb at the Super Bowl at the press conference for the most valuable player. What he did was demonstrate single-handedly how futile, how ineffective the police state, the security state is. And he questioned the narrative, the fundamental idea that it's based on, that we have to do this because of 9-11. And here's Matthew Mills. Well, that was quite amazing what you did there at the Super Bowl. We've heard all of this stuff about all the security, the F-16s, we've got $200,000 canine dogs, and yet you were able to get in and drop this video bomb on the MVP. That's kind of like going to the inaugural and getting up and, and uh, leaning over and grabbing the mic of the president. <laughs> uh, almost, yeah. Uh, not quite, but yeah, almost. That's right. So with all the security, you were able to get in just by telling them that you were late. You were, you were surprised at this, weren't you? You'd kind of believe the security would be tighter as well, didn't you? Absolutely. I had no idea I would actually get into the Super Bowl. I didn't plan on it. I tried, and I got in, and I was really surprised, and it was awesome being in there. But now, no, I had no idea. Now, you told uh, Alex about this on the radio show, but just briefly recount how you got in for us. I took the employee bus to the parking lot of the stadium. Uh, because you weren't even allowed on, in, in, on the premises without a ticket. 
And then I walked in the first gate saying I was an employee. And then there was a metal detector in there. I went through that, and then they had to scan uh, the ticket. Uh, I said, they said that you don't have the right pass. I said, I've been taken care of. I got to go. I'm late. And they said, okay. Um, then I got in. Um, then I got in the next gate by saying the same thing. <laughs> and then later in the day, because uh, I was there very early. I, I left my house at about 6 a.m. that day. And uh, uh, right around 1.30 or so, I, I was able to use that technique to get into the Super Bowl. It really wasn't hard. I mean, other people could have done it. Mm -hmm. It's basically just, it's basically just shows the lack of real security they have. Absolutely, their real job is to get people afraid, not to protect people, but to get them afraid. And you dropped really kind of a couple of bombs. Your presence being there showed people that there really isn't any effective security; that it's just simply theater. But then you also yeah. dropped the bomb about why we have this in the first place: the phony 9/11 attacks. Yeah. Now, tell us, when you went in, you went in early in the morning, you didn't get caught up in all of the crowd from the people who were going on the buses and trying to get in through the gates normally. You just went no. into the employee side, right? I went in early with the employees. So that was kind of my, my way. And I went in early that morning with the employees, and that's probably the reason I was able to get in. I think maybe in the, later in the day, they wouldn't have let anyone in without a ticket. I think early in the morning, maybe it was easier. Well, you know, actually, our reporters, Jakari Jackson and his cameraman Josh, I heard about were able this, to go in. Yeah, they didn't have, they didn't ask them for their ticket either. They were so yeah, yeah. preoccupied with all this other nonsense that I, I don't, I wonder how many people got into the Super Bowl without paying for a ticket, without even having I, one. I'm sure someone else could have snuck in easily if I did. Now, honestly, the reason that you said you were going there was because you wanted to talk to people about the Illuminati halftime performances, get their yeah. opinion about what they saw last year. And did you talk to them after the halftime? You, you watched the entire game, right? I watched the entire game, but the entire game I was up on the upper level walking around and around and around. And I interviewed all kinds of people about the Alum Illuminati. So I, I, my mission was still accomplished. I just interviewed people inside instead of outside. So I now, got a lot of good footage that was all deleted, by yeah. the way, from the cops. Right. Um, and uh, do you think you can recover that? You mentioned that that might be a possibility. You've talked to someone about that. Someone's coming over today, and they're going to take a look at that, and hopefully we'll be able to get that recovered. That's great. Yeah, one of the things that we've looked at is, uh, you know, if you get a service like Ustream, you can live stream that. And even if they confiscate <laughs> yeah. your camera, delete the stuff, if you have one of the packages that they have there, it'll save it up on the cloud. So you're kind of... I think even the, even the free Ustream saves it, if, if I'm not mistaken. Well, you have to, it, it'll save it, but you have to... Uh, you have to, to save it and end it that way. Whereas with the other one, if they just confiscated it, it's still there. But there's a uh, lot of tools okay. out there. What's coming, though, of course, is Google has just put out a patent request where they could look and see where there's a lot of people that are streaming something, and then they could hand that over to the police. And if the police don't like people streaming stuff from one location, they can essentially shut down cell phone service to that area. So it's going to oh, be uh, yeah. measures, countermeasures. That's what we're going to see coming on all along. But you know, the key thing is that you did this and you asked the questions because the mainstream media is not asking the questions. Actually, people Plus have pointed the Super Bowl out... The Super Bowl was in New York, New York also, so there was relevance to the question. Yes, and people had pointed out that the Seattle Seahawks head coach yeah. had questions himself about 9-11, but of course, nobody in the mainstream media was going to ask him any questions about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell us a little, bit, tell us a little bit about the Illuminati angle that you got with people, <laughs> even though you don't have that footage. Tell us what you found out from them. Well, most people had no idea what the Illuminati was. Uh, I mean, literally, I mean, right now, Illuminati is very popular. So most people have heard about the Illuminati, but the people I talk to in there have never even heard of the Illuminati. So, the, you know, a lot of hardcore football fans, I guess, don't really care about the Illuminati. But some people did. I, I, the, 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 two, the couple I ended up sitting next to, I asked them these questions and they, they were very awake and they knew about this kind of, this kind of stuff. And a couple other people, uh, one guy in particular, uh, believe, you know, one of the questions I asked was, um, 33 gay and straight couples were married at the Grammys a week ago. Uh, last year at the halftime show, 30, uh, the lights went out for 33 minutes. And February 2nd is the uh, uh, 33rd day of the year. I said, is that a coincidence? <laughs> uh, and it's just a quest question. You know, it's kind of interesting. It could be true. It could be not. And, and, and most of the people had no idea what I was talking about. But one guy, 
didn't think it was a coincidence and, and I guess believed in the Illuminati. And I kind of try to stay objective about the Illuminati. But if you looked at the last couple of halftime shows, it's either A, there, the, there is an Illuminati or B, uh, they're using Illuminati symbolism to sell the show. And yeah. that was one of my that was one of my other questions. I said, uh, you know, all this blatant Illuminati symbolism the past two years. Are they just trying to sell the show, or or, or is there something deeper uh, going on? That's that was one of my questions. It's definitely there. It wasn't as blatant this year as it has been right. in the past. But the Mark did, did video, you? the Mark Dice video that we had on Infowars, points out some of the some of the symbolism that's there. The idea that they got children singing as Bruno Mars is talking about uh, uh, sex locks him out of heaven, you know, not having it. And so, yeah, you know, and pulling in all of B that and the, and the symbols in the back, the triangle, triangular well, did symbolism. Well, see, did you see the word they, they flashed, uh, prepare? Yeah. Prepare? Right, yeah. Prepare? Yeah. Yeah, that was creepy. Being there, because there was all these black people in the black costumes. And I don't know, it wasn't as bad as the past couple of years, but I mean, I noticed some stuff. Well, it certainly was interesting, and, and I, I think when we look at things like this uh, song that was nominated for Best Song of the Oscars being removed because it came from an independent Christian film, I, I'm sure that would really rain on the parade of the Illuminati-type uh, satanic worship symbols that we see at all the award ceremonies now, not just the Super Bowl, not just the Grammys. It seems to be everything. They're throwing it in our face, and as you pointed out, the question is, why? Why do we keep seeing this over and over again? But you did a great job, Matthew. And it was, one of the things I think was most amazing was the fact that this uh, MVP player who's just been out fighting with these massive guys on the football field, he seemed really uh -huh. startled and taken back. And he asked, is everybody okay? <laughs> it was like you were some kind of <laughs> yeah. a threat to him or something. So Yeah. 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 I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what, what he... Uh... What do you thought? Yeah. Well, you did a great job getting the information out there, and just your presence spoke volumes about what nonsense the security theater is at the Super Bowl. Thank you so yeah. much, Matthew, for your work. No problem. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, Matthew Mills did a great job of pointing out the obvious. Government cannot make you safe. They can get all the F-16s circling the Super Bowl. They can have all the dogs sniffing everybody, but they don't even check people for their ticket. And the other thing that he's pointing out is the false narrative of 9-11. Just as Dan Bonandi pointed out the idea of a false flag, now people may look at this and take another look at it. We've seen articles in the mainstream media that poke fun at the whole idea that 9-11 was a government-staged event in order to create a security state as we now see happening. But at the same time, we've seen some of these same articles, even though they will dismiss that as nonsense, they will still talk about, well, you know, it's not as crazy as some people may think because we have this thing called Operation Northwoods, where the government plotted to do exactly that in the early 1960s, using drone planes to fly them into skyscrapers and blame it on terrorist events so they could attack Cuba. Well, if you want to keep up with the news, if you want to understand why we're concerned about the police state, if you want to follow this information as it builds, a great way to keep current with the news to understand what's going on. If you don't know anything about Operation Northwoods, if maybe you think that 9-11 was a real event. If maybe you think that the security state can protect you, sign up to Prison Planet TV and you can share that information with your friends if you know about it. Up to 10 people can watch simultaneously at the same time and it supports our operation. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at infowars.com show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at infowars.com slash show. Over the past weekend, a group of thugs beat up a couple of hippies across the street from here. Now, we're here at the police headquarters, which is at 7th, and I-35 here in Austin, Texas, and we're gonna walk over there just to show you how quickly the police could have arrived on the scene. Had the police responded, they would have discovered what the mainstream media deems a hate crime. Except the lamestream media only reports such events when the races are reversed. They cower in fear over the prospect of reporting on racism that doesn't fit Obama's agenda to use race as a political weapon. It's actually taking longer if we had just gone in a straight line, it would have taken a lot less time. Of course, police can go any direction they want. 
Just last week, Obama declared that he had been painted as a caricature by media exploring alternative viewpoints concerning the myriad of...